Francona's starting lineup for the Phillies this afternoon. Doug Lanville in center field leads off. Greg Jeffries left fielder hitting second. Scott Rowland at third base will bat third. Rico Bronia first baseman hitting fourth. Mike Lieberthal catching batting fifth. Bobby Abreu in right field hits sixth. Mark Lewis at second base batting seventh. Desi Relaford the shortstop hits eighth. Kurt Schilling pitching and batting ninth. Bruce Bochy's defense has Ed Giovanola at third base. Chris Gomez at shortstop. Kilvio Overis at second. Wally Joyner at first. Greg Myers the catcher. Greg Vaughn in the left. Steve Finley in center. Mark Sweeney in right. And Donnie Wall is the pitcher. And Donnie Wall's making his first start this afternoon after six relief appearances. He's 0-1 with an ERA of 2.19, giving up three earned runs in 12 and a third innings. All those runs came in his last outing, which was an 8-5 loss to the Braves. He was called up uh, from Vegas April 24th when Langston went on the disabled list. And his last start was last was June of last year when he was with the Astros. And 14-14 lifetime and 36 starts with a 4.98 ERA. And his first pitch to Glanville is a called strike. Nothing in one to Doug Glanville, who's batting at 3-12. Glanville with a 15-game hitting streak alive. Takes it low for a ball. One ball and one strike. 29 of 30 he has hit safely in. The only time he was stopped was by Pete Harnish in Cincinnati. He lost a fly ball to Finley in center field. Puts it away, one down. Umpires this afternoon, Hunter Wendelstadt, the son of Harry Wendelstadt, rookie umpire working the plate. Greg Bonin at first base, Angel Hernandez at second, and Crucci Frandy Marsh at third. This will be the second straight game that Kurt Schilling gets a rookie umpire. Kerwin Danley at Los Angeles and Hunter Wendelstadt here. We've seen Hunter a couple times in the Eastern League and in the International League. He does a pretty good job behind the plate. Greg Jeffries takes one a little bit wide. Jeffries hitting a 321. He's had an excellent trip, hitting 450 on this trip. All three of his home runs coming on this West Coast swing. Two balls and no strikes to Jeffries. Jeffrey, you see the guys in the National League who are swinging a bat. Barry Larkin, as you know, was in that bad slump when the Phils were in Cincinnati. He is coming out of it. Jeffrey's swinging a bat very well. Three balls and a strike to Jeffrey's. Line drive into left center field, but Finley gets a good jump on the ball and makes the play for out number two. And we'll bring up Scott Rowland. Rowland hitting at 292. Scott Six homers. He has knocked in 25. Birthday wishes today to the lovely Lorraine Devine. Wife of Michael Devine, which is from Michael, and son Christopher, and daughter Lauren. And he happy returns the day to Lorraine. One ball and one strike to Scott Rowland. Two balls and a strike. Ball's 30 years of age. Makes his home in Houston, went to southwestern Louisiana. See the difference in him starting and relieving. Actually had pretty good success in reliever, not as much as the starter. That's lofted way up in the air, and Kilby Overis makes the play, and Donnie Wall has a 1 2 3 inning here in the first. No runs, hits, errors, none left. Bills fail in the first. Padre in the top half, Padre's batting, batting in the bottom of the first, and Bruce Bochy's starting lineup will have Kilby Overis in second base leading off. Ed Giovanola, the third baseman, hits second. Steve Finley, center field, batting third. Wally Joyner at first base hits fourth. Greg Vaughn left fielder batting fifth. Greg Myers the catcher hits sixth. Mark Sweeney in right field batting seventh. Chris Gomez the shortstop hits eighth. Donnie Wall the pitcher batting ninth. Defensively behind Kurt Schilling. Scott Rowland at third. Desi Relaford shortstop. Mark Lewis at second. Rico Bronia at first. Mike Lieberthal is the catcher. 
Greg Jeffries in left, Doug Glanville in center, Bobby Abreu in right, and Kirk Schilling is on the mound. Schilling's going after win number six today, which could send the Phils home with a good record, four and three on his West Coast wing. He's lost three, he's got a 196 ERA, which ranks him second in the National League. And picked up a win in his last start Tuesday in that rain-soaked game against the Dodgers, although he wasn't in the game, or he was in the game, but not really on the mound, wasn't going back after that delay when the Phillies picked up a couple runs to runs to win the game. Seven and four in his career versus the Padres, although he didn't fare as well last year, going one and one in three starts with an unshill-like 435 earned run average. Pretty good numbers here at Qualcomm Stadium, five and two with a 279 ERA. Hits the outside corner to kill the Overis. One strike to Varis, who's hitting at 299. That one out of play. No balls and two strikes to kill the Overis. 207, 217 is batting average lifetime against Schilling. Schilling has struck him out a lot. 12 times in 23 at bats. Harris has hit a home run off Kurt. One ball and two strikes. They look so different from the right side than from the left. Harris does. He, he swings out of comes out of his shoes from the right side. Left side, he's more patient. Cuts down in his swing a little bit. He balls in two strikes. Real similar averages from both sides. That's surprising. Right-handed, he just, he looks like he's more natural right-handed. After getting ahead of him, 0-2, Schilling now has worked the count full 3-2 and two to kill the Overis. Joe frequently has trouble with those shoelaces for some reason. He, I mean, he was tying his shoelaces before the first pitch, and now here the first hitter. Harris called out on strikes. Ninety-seven strikeouts should hit a hundred today. That is fastball. He, after throwing a couple of 93 throws, it's 95 right on the black outside corner. Oh, Perfect. That's, that's right there. How can Kilvio even no. make a move to first base? That's got to think because he figured he, off Hunter Wendell's stat. Figured he couldn't hit it. Here's Ed G. Avanola. He's hitting a 298. Ground ball shortstop. Desi Relaford gobbles it up. G. Avanola's retired. That's two quick outs here in the first. Teams matching up the big difference in wins and losses, but a lot of it's due to that earned run average there at the bottom. You see it's almost a point lower here with the Padres. Big difference there. It was a pretty good team batting average of 271, tied for third in the league in that category. But the Phils not hit for much power. 29 home runs, second fewest in the league. Only the Mets have hit fewer. One strike to Steve Finley, who's under that Mendoza line now, hitting at 197. Ground ball, second base. Mark Lewis takes care of Finley. A 1-2-3 inning for Schilling. No runs, hits, errors, and none left. After one, it's a nothing-nothing game. The second, he's hitting at 325. Joiner lifetime against Kurt Schilling is three for eight. Breaking ball for a called strike. No balls and two strikes. Schilling's 97 strikeouts. Way, way out for the major league lead. I think it's a splitter here. So no slider. I don't know if that was that slitter. Maybe that was that <laughs> sliding splitter. Last ball just a little bit wide, one and two. Chilling with 97 strikeouts. Pedro Martinez leads the American League with 83. Todd Stottlemyre is next in line in the National League with 67. Chill 12.5 strikeouts per nine innings. Opponents hitting just 082 against Schilling with two strikes on him. Overall, he leads the league in opponents batting average against at 183. 
him up in the shallow left field. Oh, Desi Relaford makes the play. It's a high sky today, and high pop-ups are going to be an adventure. Scotty just threw his hands up over his head. He wasn't sure if we watch his, He just puts his hands over his head. <laughs> Could somebody get it? Because I don't see it, and I don't want to take it off the squat. And Desi coming in, probably calling him off at the same time. It is tough to get a sky like this. Battle that sun. Here's Greg Vaughn. Vaughn batting at 279. One of the big reasons why the Padres are four and a half games up in National League West. Ben Caminetti has been out with on the disabled list. They'll probably come off on Tuesday. Backing out of play behind the Phillies dugout. Vaughn was saying when he's Milwaukee having some good years, and they used to call left field out there Vaughn's Valley. He said he's starting to feel like that here now. He's really, really helped them out a lot with the, the blows they've had with injuries with Quinn and Caminetti. Richard and Chris Lipinski of Whitehaven, Pennsylvania, are honeymooning here at the ballpark today, cheering for the Phillies. Strikes. Pounds proved that that was not a fastball. Is it a slider or a splitter? Might have been a splitter. a splitter. It just got away. If it was a fastball, it, yeah, pretty good chance it would have hit him because he wouldn't have been able to get out of the way. He stays in there pretty much as long as he can. The board had that first pitch was a fastball at 83. The last time Schilling yeah. threw an 83 mile an hour fastball was when he was six. <laughs> Uh, the same thing with that, the second splitter, the same thing. Two balls and two strikes to Greg Vaughn. He rips the ball to left field, fair ball. That'll be a ground rule double as it skips into the bullpen area. So Greg Vaughn stays hot, ripping a double down the left field line. Uh, it's one thing. It's even though those pitches were inside, they're splitters, and he knows they're not fastballs, or he would have been plunked. And he's just sitting there looking away. He loves to get those arms out. You got to throw them hard in, and then if he gets that splitter down and away, that's how you get him after pitching him in. He just leaves that ball right on the middle of the plate. Brings up Greg Myers. Myers hitting at 254. One strike to him. Got the game-winning hit in last night's Padre win, but really the big play in that inning was the great bunt by Ed Giovanola with runners at first and second, no outs. Yeah, that bunt was that, was that was perfect bunt. Yeah. In between, Roland had to go back to third to get the bag. Leiter did a good job getting off the mound. It just is a perfect bunt. One ball and one strike to Myers. Okay. With a lot of big league clubs. And most of his time with Minnesota. Okay. With a lot of big league clubs. And most of his time with Minnesota. to the count. Ralph Schock of Sellersville, Pennsylvania, 90 years young today. Ralph played semi-pro ball in the 20s. Great Phillies fan. Two balls and two strikes to Greg Myers. This is what a beautiful day. This baseball was made for days like this. This is unbelievable. Myers called out on strikes. Second strikeout for Schilling. Out number two here in the second. 
Well, he went this down and away off the plate. Liebert's sitting right there. Levy does a good job of framing it, but that's Hunter Wendell still. What I've seen from what I've seen in the past, he calls strikes, and he's he's a good umpire back. Does a good job with balls and strikes. 12.52 strikeouts per nine. Here's Mark Sweeney. Sweeney hitting at 190. One strike to him. He gets runners in scoring position. Two outs. See, that's that's where you, you mean the guys that are really the horses on the staff. That's the good, the great pitchers. They shut them down when they get guys in scoring position. A ball's in a strike to Mark Sweeney. Chases that low splitter, nothing in two. See this splitter just that's that thing that just slides. It's when Shill gets a new ball. Now he's got the no ball or the ball that just hit the dirt on that. Probably won't do the same. You get a, a new ball that's just freshly rubbed up. They're really a lot of times slippery, and when they come out of that split finger, they'll just sail like that. One and two the count to Mark Sweeney. Sweeney hit 213 in 44 games for the Cardinals last year. Came over here to the Padres and did well. Hit 320 in the 71 games. He's one of the few players still remaining from that deal. Danny Jackson came over here with Sweeney and of course Jackson had the arm problems along with Rich Bachelor. Cardinals got Fernando Valenzuela, Scott Livingstone, and Phil Plantier. Out of Umer with the Cardinals. Ooh, that ball skipped right out of the glove of Lieberthal. That'll be a pass ball. It's a full count now to Sweeney. Oh, that was another splitter, I think, that I think part of part of the problem when sometimes when Schilt throws that splitter, sometimes it sails and sometimes it doesn't. And I think Levy's probably maybe waiting for that to cut back to him a little bit. Full count now to Sweeney with two outs and Vaughn at third base. Fouls it. Still three and two. He got three two throws him a slider they're in on his hands he's not. That guy on third with the right hander on deck and Gomez doesn't want to just a triple E. Sweeney. Yeah. I guess maybe he wanted it that way. It's actually S W E E N E Y. Sweeney works the walk, so Schilling, after getting ahead of him 0 and 2, loses him first walk by Schilling. Runners at first and third, two outs for Chris Gomez. In the early going, LA, it looks like Schill is trying to get strikeouts with a splitter yeah. and not the fastball. And he's getting two strikes. He's not, he must not have here in the early going, anyhow, a, a whole lot of confidence in the fastball. Which is surprising because he's throwing a couple at 95. Here's Chris Gomez hitting a 220. One strike to him. I think the his last couple games, last few games, I thought he'd thrown more sliders, more and more uh, hard sliders, and not as many splitters. I think if it does bother his arm some when he throws a lot of splitters. Runner goes, no throw, throw to third, safe, oh, almost boy. got Vaughn at third base. So Sweeney will get a stolen base. Runners are at second and third. Count as a ball and a strike. First base is open, but I think you just go Levy after. He comes out and makes a good fake, and he just hesitates just a second. That's tough to tell there. And Scotty might have thought he had him. One ball and one strike to Chris Gomez. Fouls it down the first base side. One ball and two strikes. Gomez has been a pesky hitter against Schilling. He's four for nine lifetime. Here 
Again, Schilling has another hitter buried in the count. He's had a couple of 0-2 counts and then run it full. He's got a 1-2 count here. See how he tries to get him. Throw a fastball, missed inside. It's two and two. A lot of pitches this inning. 26. It's going to takes his toll you throw a lot here and takes his toll later on in the game he's averaging 120 pitches every time out in the hole Relaford a great grab that'll save a run and he oh he did not get the out on a bang bang play and that was close I thought he had him boy great play by Desi I don't know. Maybe Greg Bonet probably here's a throw. Desi Plants makes a strong throw. One hops it over there, which is fine. Well, wow. Boy. Close play. Tie goes the runner, evidently, an infield single. I was surprised Relaford even threw the ball. He made it that close. Nearly as not sensational out. Instead, the Padres are on the board, and Donnie Wall, the pitcher, bounces one to Bronia, and that will retire the side. San Diego gets a run, two hits, no errors. They lead two. And after two, the Padres lead one to nothing. Silvio Veras leads off for the Padres here in the third. He was called out on strikes his first time up. San Diego leading it one to nothing. One ball and no strikes to kill the Overus. One and one. You think that uh, David Wells had a pretty good answer for Joe Torrey after he questioned him about being overweight and out of shape? <laughs> That's right. <laughs> yeah. Two balls and a strike to kill the Overus. They were kind of at odds about that. They were, yeah. Fouls it back two and two. In case you didn't hear, David Wells pitched a perfect game today against Minnesota. Four nothing Yankee win. <laughs> and Wells is kind of crazy too. I'm kind of curious to see what he has to say to Joe. Just missed the outside corner. Full count to kill the Overus. Schilling's run a lot of deep counts here in the early going. At 42 pitches now. Blow him away with a fastball. Second time he has struck out Barris. Third strikeout for Schilling. One down here in the third. It's a fastball again. This time gets him swinging. Almost the same spot as the other one. Probably a little more of the plate on that one. But blew it by him. Brings on Ed Giovanola. He grounded his short his first time up. Any shallow thought for the day, L.A.? Uh, yeah. I do have a shallow thought. Okay. What was the best thing before sliced bread? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> One ball of no strikes to Ed Giovanola. A splitter for a called strike, one on one. Loops a foul out of play, a ball and two strikes. Into the game, opponents hitting just 183 against Kurt Schilling. Best in the league. Roger Clemens over in the American League. Opponents are hitting just 163 against him. Really? Yeah. Wow. Two balls and two strikes. Now the back, still two and two. Foul 
tip struck him out. Four strikeouts for Schilling, two down here in the third. He's sitting out there again. He's getting the ball away and just throws that good fastball right there. That's what uh, I like to see more Schilling, you know, really establish that fastball. He got his 100th strikeout of the season. Breaking ball, and that's going to be out of here. Home run, Steve Finley. So Finley jumped on a breaking ball and gives the Padres a two to nothing lead, his fourth home run of the year. It's kind of surprising to see that from Shell because Finley is not swinging a bat good. Guys are. Not, he's not had good swings on fastballs. You see it, it's he got out in front of that. And it'll bring up Wally Joyner. Well, the Phils will have to come back for Kurt Schilling here, trailing two nothing in the third. Once again, we got him right where we want him. <laughs> Ball on a strike to Joyner. Six home runs Schilling has given up this year. Ground ball second base, Mark Lewis. Throws out Joyner. The Padres get a run on Finley's over. One hit, no errors, none left. Chris Wheeler joins Larry Anderson in the fourth after three, two, nothing. As the Phillies community calendar. Mark Lewis will lead it off, followed by Desi Relliford and then Kurt Schilling. And you see the totals in the game as Donnie Wall, the 30-year-old right-hander out of Missouri, is pitching pretty well. Finley got a good jump on that, and he'll run it down. Steve Finley, an outstanding center fielder, makes a good play, one out. Donnie Wall doing just what they hoped he would do, and that's keep them in the ballgame. He's a spot starter since they had a doubleheader this week, a makeup doubleheader, and they needed a pitcher. He hadn't given up a run until his last outing. Gave up three, and that's the only runs he's given up all year. Five appearances prior to that didn't give up anything. Had been in relief up until today. Six games all in relief with an 0-1 record. And a good earned run average of 2.19. As Andy mentioned, he hadn't given up anything until that game uh, against the Braves on the 10th of May. That was a week ago today. Strike call. And he has been right around the plate. One ball and one strike to Relliford. As he hit that double down the right field line in the third inning that sent off that chain of comedic events. She looked like she was in the middle of an earthquake. <laughs> there she is. That was a blooper reel highlight if there ever was one. And Desi takes it outside. Good job by Desi. Relliford draws a walk, and that'll bring up Kurt Schilling. Could be up there to bunt. St. Louis Cardinals in town on Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday. Final time to see Mark McGuire and the Redbirds at the vet this year. All games will start at 705-463-1000 or on the internet at phillies.com 24 hours a day. Mark McGuire and the Cardinals come out early and watch BP. It is a treat. What was that home run? How far that last one he hit? Last night, 540 40s. something. He says it's the longest one he ever hit. Punch and fouls it off the home plate umpire, and Wendelstad is shaken by that one. He'll take a little walk. Well, he watched his dad take a lot of them as a kid and still wanted to do this for a living. And this one hurt him. Oh, right off his wrist. Yep, and they're really concerned. This could be serious. That might. Yeah, that might be a problem. Might be broke. See, all the other umpires came in right away. And uh, Randy Marsh, the crew chief. The Wendelstadt, you know, umpires hate to cause delays in games. That's their job to speed the game up, move it along. And, you know, they shake it off pretty well for as often as they get hit. But that one had to hurt. It's just the ball just goes right under Myers' glove there as he bunts it. And there's nothing 
His hand right on his knee goes right off his, right, right off that wrist bone. Oh, man, that's totally unprotected there. Nothing he can do about that, just bad luck. I think the Phillies are asking whether or not that ball was actually foul. Yeah, there's no question it was foul. Yeah, I mean, what else could he ask? There's only one pitch, so it can't be the count. That was the first pitch. Wendelstad is trying to convince Terry Francona. And he seems to be convinced he'll walk away. I don't know what else... Yeah, unless they throw, I mean, he bunted at it, didn't he? Yeah. So it would have been a strike no matter what. No, I don't know. Outside, one ball and one strike. Well, maybe, did Desi go to second? Maybe. Well, that could have been it. He went, yeah, they, they could have thought that if he bunted at it and the ball was missed, that he should be on second. Takes a strike. One ball and two strikes. Schilling did not get the bunt down the first time up, but was able to hit a 3-2 pitch to first and move Desi over to third, and then he was stranded. And Schill does does things to help himself. It's surprising, and, and two at-bats he had. I mean, he got him over the first time, but surprising he hasn't gotten the bunt down either time. Because he, he generally, I mean, he, he works at it. He, he works at all parts of his game to to help himself right he wants to have an advantage when he is up there he, he admires those Atlanta pitchers so yep. much and the way they help themselves a ball two strikes on him one out Desi Relaford at first base two nothing San Diego in the fifth inning outside two and two William and Marie Maffa visiting here from Marlton New Jersey wish the Phillies all the best thank you thank them I mean I'm thanking them for you yeah, well, there's a lot of Philadelphia people out in this area. This is such a big Navy town. There he goes. And Schilling fouls it back. Gives us a chance to wish Joe Filer of Lindenwald and Ricky Evans of Medford a happy birthday and also anniversary wishes to Mr. and Mrs. Richard Evans of Medford. As Terry Francona looks on, his ball club three and one coming in here on the trip to San Diego and then having a couple of one-run losses to be a three and three here in the final game of the trip. And Schilling rarely pulls a ball, and he beats one foul to John Vukovic at third. Yeah, it feels I mean, easily could be, you know, with the win the day going home at five and two, and they're fighting right now to go home at four and three. But they've had a pretty good trip, but the last two games have been not, they have not played well, no, Friday and Saturday here in San Diego. I think sloppy is a good description of Friday night's game, and last night was over aggressive and bizarre. Bizarre. Yeah, it was. And you give the Padres credit. I mean, they're a good home ball club. They'll beat you if they stay close. There goes Relaford again, and a high chopper to a short. Gomez will throw out Schilling for the second out of the inning. Relaford at second. They're two away for Doug Glanville. Desi gets a good jump here. And he's only stolen four bases, but he hasn't been caught. He's a he's a very good base runner. Desi Relaford ever hits enough to hit up in the order. He will steal bases. Yes. It's yes, tough to steal bases when you're batting eight. Well, you basically you, you know you, you don't want to get thrown out, especially if there's two outs with the pitcher up there. Or he'd have to come and start off the next inning with the pitcher. Good. Another festive beach ball is removed. Yeah, it, anybody that hits a beach ball at a baseball game ought to be escorted out. That drives me nuts. See Jeez. a lot of it out here. Oh. Glanville's 0 for 2. He's flied out and grounded out. It's not like they don't have a lot of beach where they could go play beach ball. I bet those beaches are crowded today. It's gorgeous yeah. here in San Diego. This, this is what baseball was made for days like this or Days like this were made for baseball, one or the other. Not a cloud in the sky. Back through the middle, and another base hit for Doug Glanville. Scoring is Desi, and the Phillies are on the board. It's a two-to-one game on a two-out single by Doug Glanville, who has hit in 16 straight and 31 out of 30. I mean, <laughs> 30 out of 31. 31 out of 30. He's, <laughs> that guy's a great hitter. 
better than Pete Rose. <laughs> yeah. Joe DiMaggio, there's the base hit. Kind of put a little emphasis on that and got a little dyslectic. A little what? You know, oh. backwards. I should know that word. You certainly should. Greg Jeffries, he's hit it hard twice. So Reliford running on that play when Schilling topped it over the mound. Might have gotten there anyway, but definitely got there by running. Winds up getting the Phillies a run, and it's now 2-1 to one in favor of San Diego. Jeffries fouls it off. He hit a ball hard to left center his first time up, run down by Finley. And then a good play by Veras. There's that changeup came Carlos Reyes. We saw him last night. He's on the right. And Ben Van Ryan, a much-traveled left-hander, the one left-hander in the bullpen. The ball's on a strike on Jeffries. There's a base hit as he hits it hard for the third time. Glanville will stop at second. And the Phillies with consecutive hits. And they have two on with two outs for Rowland, who's 0 for 2 with a pop-up and a strikeout. You see that that pitch there? I'm sorry, that base hit there. Jeffrey's good to me, hitting the ball hard. But Glanville going to second. This time didn't look back at the ball. They looked at John Vukovic, something that Buki's been a little perturbed about with the base running. Guy's not picking him up at third base. Well, with two outs, too, you want to be careful. You don't want to make that third out. Right. With one out, the, the play Roland made last night was an aggressive See play right that didn't there. work. He looks up at Buki. Buki's giving him the hold sign. He knows what's happened a couple times yesterday. Doug Landville once, Mark Lewis once. Ball's hit behind him looking back at the ball. There's no need to do that because you got the third base coach there for that simple reason, to pick him up, and he's going to let you know to come, keep coming or... Or go back. A lot of good base runners know right away. I mean, they know where the outfielder is. They know how hard the ball's hit. They know if they can go first to third. But if you're in, if you're thinking about it, your point is look at the third base coach. Yeah. Buki, it's happy to see him down there in the third base coach's box today. I checked his wrist this morning when we got here. <laughs> looked at him in the dugout. He was still mad. I grabbed his wrist and I said, "Which one did you slit?" You see that pitch count here is Donnie Wall is very high at 77 and. We mentioned earlier that he has only pitched in relief this year, and that's why the bullpen is up so early. I mean, they would be ecstatic to get five innings out of him. Yeah. Or even happy. Dave Stewart talking with Bruce Bochy. Well, he's looking for another two-out hit. They have one in this inning to score a run. The count now 2-0 and on Scott Rowland with Brony on deck, and that left-hander Van Ryan throwing out there, and he's up for Brony. Three and all, and Rowan will take a look at Vukovic, see if he gets a green light. Well, this is Wall's first start up here. I mean, he's done a good job. They'd like to get him through five, but if, if he gets close to five, I think they're going to be happy with it. And you now as a spot starter, three balls and no strikes. The pitch. He took it on the inside corner for a strike. Three and one. Phillies have good speed on the bases with Glanville at second. And Jeffrey's on at first. There you see them with two outs. They will be off at the crack of the bat. At the third baseman, Giovanola over to second. One run in the inning on two hits, no errors, and two left. Through four and a half, two on San Diego. Play, it's the Padres two, the Phillies one. Tonight at 10.30, following the news, anchor Otis Livingston delivers the goods in the form of highlights, scores, and action from around the world of sports. Watch WB17 Sunday Sports Express, only on Philadelphia's WB17. Mark Sweeney will leave it off for the Padres here in the bottom of the seventh. Sweeney has walked and grounded out. be followed by Chris Gomez and then maybe a hitter for Bowringer as the Padres have bullpen activity. Dan Maselli is up in San Diego's bullpen. That's well hit to left field. Jeffries won't get it off the base of the fence. Rolling into second with a double is Mark Sweeney to lead off the Padres seven. The number six given up by Schilling. Pitches away from Sweeney, or they're going to take him out for a pinch runner, and he hits it pretty hard. 
fastball. Schilling probably got more of the plate there than he than he wanted to, and uh, Sweeney's pretty good left-handed hitter. Jeffries plays it well, and Sweeney gets a double. Ruben Rivera will come on to pinch run for Sweeney at second base. Probably will stay in the play right field. Chris Gomez will bat. Gomez has an infield single that knocked in the Padres' first run. He's also struck out. Let's see if he bunts here. He is bunting. Chilling bare hands and goes to third, but they didn't get him. I think Chilling took Roland by surprise. I and mean, there's no force on that play. It had to be perfect. Roland yeah. was retreating. Chilling got on it in a hurry. He had a good base runner out there. And Phillies have made a lot of mistakes in this series, and it's cost them up to this point. Here's the bunt. This is one of those ones where you almost have to surrender. See, Roland retreats. But Rivera had gotten a great jump, and they made it close, but it was going to take a perfect play. Here it is again. Roland's going backwards, feeling for the bag the whole time. And big hand is for Tony Gwynn coming out to hit. Tony Gwynn batting for Bowringer with runners at first and third. Nobody out here in the seventh inning. One ball and no strikes to Gwynn. Gwynn has been a tough out for Schilling. 417 lifetime with a home run. Two balls and no strikes to Gwynn, so Schilling in some trouble here in the seventh. Gwynn has thrown his 100th pitch here in the seventh inning. Gwynn fouls that one out of play. Two balls and a strike. Is that Tony Gwynn? Had to lead the game on Friday night. And MRI was negative. He'll probably be back in the starting lineup Tuesday. Line drive center field. Tagging and waltzing home will be Ruben Rivera with the 1,000 career RBI for T. Gwynn. Tony Gwynn knocks in his 1,000th run, another milestone for one of the great hitters in the history of the game, one of the great guys in the history of the game. So he gets his 1,000th standing ovation in this ballpark, too, and he's earned every one of them. He will be a first ballot Hall of Famer someday, and he's closing in on 3,000 hits. He could even get it this year. I think he needs 165, yeah. something like that. It'd be tough. I mean, but with him, how do you put anything? You know, say he can't do it. You know, he's probably going to win another batting title, which would be nine of them. He's amazing. One strike to kill the Overus, who has struck out all three times that he's been up. That's a huge run. Thanks to the 3-1 ball game. low two balls and a strike to Kelvio Veras. He's will be looking at Dan Maselli in the eighth inning. And then I'm sure Trevor Hoffman in the ninth. They wanted that ball. That's what that delay was. As you look at Maselli, they, they, they just asked Schilling to toss that ball back in. The ball boy came out to the home plate umpire and they tossed the ball to the dugout for Tony Gwynn. 1,000th career RBI, and yeah, that's a milestone. Chop to Roland, Roland to Lewis, one relay, double play. So they go around the horn. The Padres do get a run in the inning, however. One hit, no errors, and none left. We go to the 8-3-1 San Diego. What a major league scoreboard. The Cubs beat Cincinnati 10-1. Kerry Wood, the rookie, struck out eight in six innings. St. Louis 13-4 over Florida. Brian Jordan 5-5 five for five with a homer. Houston knocked out John Smoltz in the fifth. They won Astros over Atlanta. 
Colorado finally all of his six-game losing streak in Milwaukee 2-1 behind Jamie Wright. Dodgers are leading Montreal 5-3 in the sixth, and the Giants are shutting out the Mets 3-0 in the seventh. Pittsburgh and Arizona tonight. Big news in the American League, a perfect game thrown by David Wells at Yankee Stadium. Perfecto against Minnesota, 4-0 Yankees. Texas Edge, Cleveland 1-0 behind Aaron Seeley. Detroit 4-3 over Anaheim. Boston beat KC 5-3. Tampa Bay swept those Orioles 7-3. The Devil Rays. And Oakland over Chicago 9-7. Seattle and Toronto will play tonight. That's your Toyota Major League scoreboard. Here it is 3-1. Padres lead it, and Trevor Hoffman will come in and try to save this one for Donnie Wall. Hoffman has been outstanding. Look at his numbers, 2-0, 12 saves and 12 opportunities, a 1-3-1 ERA. 19 strikeouts in 20 and two-thirds innings, five walks. Opponents are hitting 171 against him. Well, we talked several innings ago that you didn't want to get the game to this point. So, you know, you beat Trevor Hoffman, you've really earned it. And the Phillies need two to tie and three to go ahead. Bobby Abreu has two hits and three at bats. Two of the Phillies' six hits on the afternoon. This guy used to be strictly a hardball, a fastball slider. A couple years ago, he came up with a tremendous changeup, and that's made it. Yeah. There it was, and it was a little bit high for a ball one and one. Right, he'll throw a fastball, you know, low 90s and a good hard slider, but basically he's throwing fastball change up now. Following the strike to Bobby Abreu. Missed a little high with it again. Two balls and a strike. ball foul out of play. Two balls and two strikes to Bobby Abreu. In the right center field, that's going to fall for a hit for Abreu. And he is a leadoff base runner with a line single to right center, his third hit of the ball game. The guy's a hitting machine, and that was a tough pitch he hit there. That looked like a fastball, and it got up and in on him, too. After all those change-ups, Hoffman tries to jam him with a fastball, and he just fights it off and gets on. Ruben Amaro is going to come out and pinch hit for Mark Lewis. So Ruben will bat here. Well, Amaro is the one move that um, Francona has off the bench left-handed. So he's going to use him right away. Ruben hitting at 2.07 as a pinch hitter. He is 5 for 16 with three runs batted in. Abreu first base. Nobody out here in the ninth. No strikes to Ruben Amaro. Ruben Amaro with five pinch hits tied for the lead lead along with Wilton Guerrero and Brian Hunter. Two balls and no strikes. Ruben has faced Trevor Hoffman three times. Two walks and a strikeout. Take a walk here. Yeah, I mean, you don't beat this guy with a homer very often. He hasn't thrown a home run ball this year. You try to piece an inning together against him. On the outside corner with that one, two and one to Ruben Amaro. Silvio Vera 
Morris juggles, did finally get the out at first base. Harris in his haste to try to get two almost lost both of them. He did get Amaro at first base, moving up to second as Abreu. It's a dead double play ball. And Varis has been good in this series, but he gets his feet tangled up a little bit, and then that causes him to bobble it. But he still had the presence of mind to make a strong throw to first and get a morrow. It'll bring up Desi Relliford, who has doubled, walked, and scored the Phillies' only run and struck out. Kevin Jordan has moved into the on-deck circle to bat for Kurt Schilling. No strikes to Desi Relliford. Abreu with second, one down here in the ninth inning. Close trail, 3 1. And one to Desi. two strikes. What makes his changeup so effective is his arm speed. Look how his arm, it looks just like he's throwing a fastball. And then the ball just squirts out of his hand and dives. Struck him out with a changeup. That's out number two here in the ninth inning. That's up to Kevin Jordan to keep the game alive. Another changeup. And the, the ball has down and away action the left-handed hitters. And he chases it. Now, Kevin Jordan loves to hit a first ball fastball. They, they probably know that, so it'd be surprising if they give him a first ball fastball to hit. Jordan hitting a 245 as a pinch hitter, three for 13 with a homer and five RBIs. Got a change up. Oh, what a great play by Gia Vanola getting Jordan to end the ball game. Ed Giovanola has been a big factor in this sweep of the series by the Padres. A superb bunt last night in the ninth inning to help win that game and that play, taking extra bases away from Kevin Jordan. Great play by Giovanola. Phillies are down in the ninth. No runs, a hit, no errors, and one left. Phillies lose it by a score of 3-1 and are swept here at Qualcomm Stadium by the Padres. 3-1 final this afternoon. So San Diego at home goes to 15-4. 3-1 this afternoon. We'll be back with the totals and a recap in a moment.